The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Good morning and welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm CJ. And I'm Carlos. And it's going to be a wonderful Wednesday. And we're going to start out first with a little somber uh, news. Um, many of you may, uh, who have been to BCC uh, and possibly have uh, met this amazing woman, uh, Gwendolyn Day. She used to be a secretary here for uh, Frank Noble and... Uh, She's done a lot of work, 26 years of work here at Bristol Community College. Um, and Mrs. Day passed away at 90 years old on Monday. Uh, her son uh, is Ken Day, her other son is Donald, and the third son is Jeffrey. Um, I have a uh, connection with this family for some time, not only here from BCC, but, uh, excuse me, um, Donald's uh, wife is Elizabeth. Um, they live in Florida now, and um, Elizabeth Day was my fifth grade uh, school teacher. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is a great loss to uh, the family and to many people who knew uh, Gwen Day. Uh, she worked at Bradley's for years as well, and she worked at Walmart in, in the latter part of her life. But she was here at BCC for 26 years, and I know that many people who may still be here at BCC and many who have since retired will remember uh, Gwen Day uh, very fondly. Uh, so my condolences goes out to uh, the Day family and uh, to the Bristol Community College family who may have, you know, remembered Gwen very nicely. So with that, we get right into the news. You know, the first thing I want to talk about is yesterday, uh, prior to its uh, general release by the general media, uh, Spindle City Straight Talk released the fact that the president, uh, sent us some information in regards to his position on overtime. And he's expanded overtime now availability to a huge portion of individuals and raised the overtime limit to $47,000 a year. This is going to affect a lot of restaurants because they used to use something that, and this isn't racist, this is something we used to call Chinese overtime to pay. A lot of the fast food restaurants did that and uh, for anyone who worked over 40 hours. And the problem with that is that you really weren't getting a lot of money uh, for your overtime hours. But uh, it's interesting to see. Please be uh, watching for the uh, upcoming uh, news about that and if it's going to affect you or your particular employment or your job. Uh, so it's going to be, again, very interesting to see how this pans out. Now, Carlos, what do you think about Channel 7? No longer being an NBC affiliate. Well, you know, Comcast owns NBC, mm -hmm. and they had notified Channel 7 uh, earlier, uh, or I should say in the latter part of last year, that they were not going to renew their franchise. Uh, Channel 7 went to uh, court, and the court said, no, you were in a contract, and they don't want to renew their contract, and that's their right. The problem is, is that the over-the-year channel that Channel, 10, uh, Channel 7 wants to go to is out of New Hampshire. Uh, it's a Telemundo station currently, and they want to use uh, New England Cable News, NECN, as, I guess, their pivot point. But the broadcast from Channel 60, if that's what it is, uh, the, the Telemundo station, is a very low power. So it's not going to reach everyone over the air for free. And it's also not going to reach a great deal of people down in this part of Massachusetts because cable systems are only required to carry a channel that is within 50 miles of their broadcast area. So if the station is in New Hampshire, guess what? It's not here. So we may lose Channel 7 on our local cable uh, franchise, and it will make things a little difficult. Now, 
a lot of people in the city are already up in arms since I, you know, published the announcement because they're tired of Comcast as it is. Uh, but it's because of Comcast that this station can be brought to you, uh, not this broadcast, but this station. And there is a lot of question. And the biggest question I think that I've had is why has not why has Fall River not opened up the cable market here to other providers such as Cox, Clear Channel, you know, Charter, whoever they may be, and make that available because competition means lower prices because it's harder for companies to keep raising their prices. But uh, you know, I'm not I'm not sure uh, how you feel about that, Carlos. But uh, well, um, and it's funny that I I post just a couple of weeks ago that I pay two hundred and two dollar uh, a month for cable, just because the four of us in the house. Um, like different channels and for and when I pick my package is like I had to pick three different packages just because um, the channels that we want are in different packages and they know how to do it and to grab you right um, to pay uh, more more for channels so right now I probably have like 400 500 channels and my best channel is channel 18. <laughs> there you, you know, go. Which is free. I spend <laughs> which is the free one. And that's what I spend more time every time that I have a little bit of time um, and, uh, to, to, uh, to watch TV. It's on channel 18 or channel 95. Channel 18 most because of the meetings that I cannot be in every single meeting, but I want to be uh, update with, with, all the, uh, uh, with all the meetings. And... Uh, um, so th this, I mean, for the people that really um, likes uh, this channel, um, I, 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 I'm not familiar with this channel. I don't spend too much uh, time watching this particular channel. But for the people that are uh, really um, committed and they like the program on this channel, I think it's going to be it's going to be a loss. And I don't know why actually they they have to. Uh, um, I think they have plenty of money. We pay <laughs> Comcast plenty of money to uh, to keep um, uh, uh, you know the, 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 the channels to people. Um, I think they're going the same way that the city is going. You know, give me more money, and we're going to cut you the services more and more. And and I think that's that's what's going on with with cable right now. I don't think the the decision is because of money, because I, I bet they uh, they have good money. Yeah, well, it, you know, it's WHDH Channel 7, and, you know, I occasionally watch them. Uh, they are the NBC affiliate currently, uh, especially for the state of the state address uh, from the governor of Massachusetts, uh, because the Providence stations, which we are in what they call a DMA, uh, we're in the Rhode Island DMA, and so they provide a lot of Providence programming in the Rhode Island DMA, even though one of the stations in that DMA, which is Channel 6, is actually a New Bedford license. They still provide Rhode Island license mm -hmm. uh, programming. So let's get on to something interesting now, because you love boards no, and uh, keep regulations. The, uh, the eye on the phone, because. Uh, uh, I, 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 I'm, I've been watching for the, okay. the blinking light, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, last night, I attended the ordinance meeting, and we had two issues come up. And of course, the first big issue, which I have been beating the heck out of, uh, for ages uh, with this city is 30A violations. Mm -hmm. Now, some time ago, uh, I and my cohort in uh, accountability and transparency, uh, Patrick Higgins, filed 30A violations on the Ordinance Committee. Why? Because there's five Ordinance Committee members in that subcommittee. Now, five constitutes a quorum in a city council meeting. Always remember, half plus one. So there's nine, half is four, or about four, plus one makes five is a quorum. So also, five votes passes anything in the city council. Mm -hmm. So think about this for a moment. If you're sitting in, in the ordinance committee meeting and all five of you unanimously, unanimously vote, to move something on to the full council, you can just assume that it's approved. Because mm -hmm. guess what? You already got the votes. Exactly. So there is no question that this is a 
a quorum of a city council meeting, which means that it is an unposted special city council meeting. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear that. We've been five for years and years and years. It doesn't matter. You've been violating the law for years and years and years. So, again, another one. And we have, I think, two or three of these currently pending with the Attorney General's office. Mm -hmm. But now what I want to get into is the nuts and bolts of what went on at that meeting. They beat the crap out of the DCM salary mm -hmm. for the new person. Okay? And they all made excuses why they can't do this, why they can't do that, we should do this, we should do that, blah, blah, blah. But the one statement that came out, which I have to put in forthrightly and very clearly is, if you do nothing, it stays with the mayor. And Kathy Ann was very clear about that. And they wanted to put in ordinance the salary was $98,000. Or up to $98,000 or, or some, something along that lines. Steve Long was very clear on it. Now, they got to the point where Joe Macy had to come down and had to explain to them that, no, this is an ordinance where the salary can be up to or et cetera, et cetera. So that's not a question anymore. The salary can be up to $98,000. And we know with this position, it's going to be a political patronage job. It's going to be somebody who is going to get the $98,000, and then we're going to throw in money on top of that. We know that. That's how they do it. Um, but the question came up, well, what if in a year we have to give him a cost of living increase? Well, then it has to go back before the city council to approve the new salary. Mm -hmm. They want it to stay in control of the mayor. Okay, that's what the mayor wants, and we know that, and that's fine. But, you know, you got to have a little bit of accountability. And they can say, well, if we don't have an exact dollar figure, how can we set it in the budget? Uh, because the mayor controls the budget? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and personally, I still don't see the, the numbers producing a savings by the splitting of these two departments. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't. Um, but it, it was, a, again, it was another act of futility. Mm -hmm. nothing, of course, nothing happens. Nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens. And... I sit there and I, I look at these people, these five people, and the five are Cliff Ponty, uh, Steve Long, Linda Pereira, Pamela Liberté LeBeau, and Joe Camara. And I'm sitting there watching them, and I, the, the faces, please, watch the video. The video is up online on Florida Government Television. Watch the video, please. And look at their faces. Honestly, look at their faces, because... What their words are saying and what their face is showing are two totally different worlds. Mm -hmm. And we've seen this numerous times. You know that, Carlos. Yep. But um, I think it was a, w a total waste of time. And, you know, it, to me it was this simple. The ordinance, the position was already created in ordinance because they weren't thinking, of course, mm -hmm. they never think. The position was created in ordinance. Now just create the ordinance that governs the salary. Okay? The salary shall be or the salary shall not exceed $98,000 per annum. Mm -hmm. Or divide that by 52 weeks or 26 weeks and, you know, per by pay period or whatever the case may be. Pretty simple, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, you and I could do that. <laughs> yeah. it, 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 so it just gets to be frustrating. And, and, and again, remember that if we're going to go private with the trash, it's going to be this person going to have less to do um, on that position. So I think that should be taken in consideration when you give this job up to 98, keep a low, because if, uh, you know, it makes no sense for um, uh, the position to be doing less work and, and still get, getting paid the same money, or less responsibility and getting paid the same money. Carlos, are you thinking with logic? Are you thinking logically? I mean, no, we, I think it's my Portuguese side. I, I think so, <laughs> I, you know, because I'm telling you, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. We'll pay you $98,000. Oh, by the way, we're taking away one third of your work. Yeah. Meanwhile, we're going to give a thing. job to Camp Chico. I heard before the $80,000. Yeah. That job should be uh, advertised for $80,000. I agree. And when we are interviewing, we should say this job could get you a raise up to. 98,000 if you um, if you do your job right like any other job 
Uh, I there you went go again. to interviews for jobs before um, that they told me, you're going to start with $7 an hour, but if you prove yourself, you can be making uh, $15, $15 an hour two years from now. This gives an incentive to the person to do their job and do it right. Okay, so when we advertise that, we should be advertising that position starting at 80,000. And can be, you can be made up to 98,000. But you and I both know that the boy emperor is not going to hire anyone at the low end. He's going to hire his friends at the highest possible salary he can give them. But, I mean, let's be real. He hired, not, he hired Chris that, Paranoia. But uh, advertising, uh, uh, CJ, advertising at starting at 80,000, that then say that we cannot hire at 90,000. I agree. You know what I'm saying? I because, agree. So that puts away that, that uh, uh, um, say that, you know, if uh, it's people out there making a lot, in other communities making a lot of more money than 80,000, the money it's there. It, it's, it's available to pay up to 98,000, but we need to, um, we need to uh, a margin to negotiate. And that negotiation, it comes between the 80 and the 98,000. Because if we hire at 98,000, now, now we don't have that negotiation number. That's it, he, he's hiring uh, 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 and he's gonna get paid the maximum that we can afford. And, and no company in the, private, in the private section will work like this. N none other, pro I mean, I, I, never, I never saw it. But um, on, on my 50 years that I'm around this, uh, uh, this world, I, I, you know, and I never saw a company interviewing somebody and giving that person the, the, the maximum that they should afford to pay them. Well, that's because it didn't go to the Fall River School of Employment, okay? At the Fall River School of Employment, you get a job, you make six figures, and when you fail or you screw up, you get a raise, mm -hmm. because that's how we run Fall River. Mm -hmm. And you know, we have a residency requirement in Fall River. Okay, granted it gives you 18 months to do it, but the mayor's already hired people, and have they established residency? I know one did, um, but Faust Fiore is the special assistant. Last I knew, he was living outside of New Bedford. He wasn't living here in Fall River. I know he's from Fall River, mm -hmm. you know, his entire family is, but has he established residency in Fall River? Has any new hires been hired that are residents of Fall River? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and these are the issues that we have. Mm -hmm. Because, again, if you can take the city money, the city taxpayer money for your job, mm -hmm. you should be able to live in Fall River to spend it. I, I, and hi, I'm not against hiring people that's not from Fall River as long as they're qualified and we cannot find a city resident that could qualify for the job. Right. If you went through the applications and, and uh, you know, and, and you advertise the position, you got the applications in, and the person most qualified to take the job happens not to live in Fall River, I have no, no problem with that. The problem I have is if we don't go through the process and, and if we, on top of it, we hide somebody that lives outside the city then I, I think that's, that's where we have been having a problem. And we've been having this, this, this problem for, you know, for... For years, uh, yeah. For years. But you know, the you thing... Administration uh, after administration. Right. And, and, and I, uh, I joked with you a couple of times already when, when you tried to, uh, make, you know, make me run for, for office. And one thing that I've been telling you for all this time, and probably I will say on the air now, is so it's no, so we clear and it, it, it and is on, on, on video. If one day I'm crazy enough to run for, for office of mayor of Fall River, one thing that I'm gonna tell you and probably I'm gonna lose, you know, I will never get elected because of that is, if you really believe that I'm gonna do the good job in Fall River as mayor, and you want to become part of my team, one thing that you have to have in your mind is you're most than welcome, but don't think I'm going to give you a job. Because nobody on my team will get a job if I become mayor of Fall River. So 
That's why I think the list to support me for mayor is gonna, <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna be like two people volunteering, and that's not gonna be enough people to get me elected. So you're funny, Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, let's move on a little bit. You know, something, yeah. that, something that I worked on about two years ago uh, with the then Ordinance Committee meeting, uh, and I've worked with uh, Dan Robillard and several others on it, is wheelchair-accessible taxi cabs. And the item was brought up again last night uh, at the Ordinance Committee meeting. This is a no-brainer, okay? And... The advocates for disability, and I'm calling them out today. Linda, I got to vote for it even though it's wrong, Pereira, and Pam La Liberté LeBeau tabled this issue again for another month. It's already been tabled for two years. There's case law on it, and they tabled it for another month. And I would have expected Pam to at least come out and got more into this. Oh, and by the way, uh, City Council Ponte, once a motion to table has been made, it is non-debatable. You get the second, you take the vote, it's done. There are no more input, there's nothing. Please, take a, a, a course on parliamentary procedure because the entire City Council doesn't get it right. But back to, back to what I'm talking about here. You know, when Pam wanted her inclusion playground at Kennedy Park it got to the point where they couldn't do it on their own she had a meeting with then Mayor Will Flanagan she had a meeting with uh, members of the Disability Commission and the quote that was given to me by members of the Disability Commission was and this came from Pamela Liberty LeBeau I don't care where the city gets the money as long as they get it really so what's the big change now? You didn't care about the money then, and obviously your votes and your actions so far are kind of the same way. So you, you've already demonstrated to us in the past that as long as you're benefiting from the money of the city, you're happy. doesn't matter if I have to pay for it and I, I'm not happy with it or any other taxpayer. But the thing that bothered me more so about anything else was... They used the excuse that the other cab company in Fall River got sold recently and they weren't present. Well, they used the same excuse last time they tabled it. The other cab company didn't show up, therefore we have to put it aside. And I'm going to give you the case law that's on this. It's a, um, the case law on it is 11 CIV OT... Let me find this again. It's 11 CIV 0237. It was filed in the Federal Southern District Court of New York. Okay? And that was um, Wheelchairs for All versus New York City Taxi and Limo Service. It was also known as NOEL 504, the New York City Taxi and Limousine. And they actually had rulings. This case law on it. I gave that case law to John Mitchell two years ago. And he says, oh, yeah, I remember reading it. That case was filed in 2011. So last night when I got home, at the request of City Councilor Cliff Ponte, I sent him the entire package. And I also sent it to the other eight nitwitted nine. The other eight members of the nitwitted nine. You know, it's time. Dennis Baselli said it best, I think when he turned around and he said, it's been 25 years since an, since an action of the American with Disabilities Act. 25 years. Other cities and towns in Massachusetts, Boston, Framingham, Worcester, Cambridge, they all do this. Providence does it. Why can't Fall River do it? Well, one of, one of the cab owners said, we're a poor community. If I have to do this, I can't afford to do it. The vans alone cost $30,000. Well, if you're doing this just to cater to somebody in a wheelchair, you're not going to make any money. You're not. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. But, you know, I, I said very, very clearly to them, because, again, Pam LeBeau came up with the perfect compromise. Why don't we get one van and both cab companies share it? Are you serious? Are you serious? One cab? 
In the New York case, 50%, 5-0% of the New York fleet of taxis and limousines must be converted to wheelchair accessible vehicles by 2020. It's only four years away. 2020. You know how large the fleet of cabs is in New York? I mean, you drive down, and you've been there several times, so have oh, I, yeah. Carlos. Yeah. You drive down the streets, you, you look, you got, you got one cab for like every half a car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you got like a two to one odds or three to it's one odds on cabs. for one car. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're all over the place. So imagine half of that fleet now being handicap accessible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're saying, oh, well, we got to buy these vans. You don't have to necessarily get vans. In London, their entire fleet is wheelchair accessible. And they're not vans, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, vans is the quick way to do it, I guess. Uh, maybe not necessarily the cheapest, but definitely the quick way. And the argument then comes up from the cab companies. We don't want, people don't want to drive the, that vehicle at night. They don't want to take the training. And it's impossible to do. Plus, we've gotten one phone call since we got the van. And we paid $18,000 for it. Now, if the city pays for it, why is it that private industry keeps running to the city to pay for it? Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way. No. It doesn't work that way. No, okay? And, and, and this is how come we have a city council and Linda Pereira and Pam Liberté LeBeau, the two right there, two of them, and I'm shocked from Pam, shocked. My opinion, and again, this is my opinion. Like it or not, this is my opinion. That vote by that entire committee on ordinance to table the matter before any discussion was even had that they moved to discuss right away was a slap in the face to every single individual in the city of Fall River or any individual in Fall River who has a family member who's in a wheelchair and may need this service. You said to those people, I don't represent people in wheelchairs. Again, that's my opinion. Rather harsh, but my opinion. And like it or not, you did that. You did that because the information provided, and none of you have an excuse. Here's the email that was sent to you. Not one of you have an excuse now. You all got it last night. They, you've moved this on to June, okay? What excuse are we going to hear in June? Oh, well, you know, this cab company can't be there or that cab company can't be there. This isn't about money. Your job is to not to determine if this is going to have a financial impact on the private industry. Your job is to uphold the law. Mm -hmm. It is to uphold the law. Now, I will guarantee you that if Linda Pereira was in a wheelchair, personally, that this would have been heard last night. I will guarantee you that Pamela Liberté LeBeau, if she was confined, personally confined to a wheelchair, she would have heard this last night. Well, it's time for these people to grow a backbone. Well, the city has a handicapped van. Let's put the taxi sign on top. <laughs> you, know. you know, it's, it's ridiculous. And they say, well, maybe Serta should handle this. Let's get Serta down here. Mm -hmm. Serta is not in the private industry. It's not Serta's job. It's not Serta's job. And then they say, well, Ripton helps out their cab companies. No, what Ripton did was they entered into a contract with select individual companies to provide the services that they were equipped to handle. Yep. A lot of companies do that. Mm -hmm. The city of Fall River does it every day with every individual consultant they hire, every engineering nitwit. Yep. Yep. I can't believe the show's over already. Did you? <laughs> hey, so, thanks Friday, for watching. Uh, Chip will be here. So, yes, Chip will be here on Friday. Good news. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Have a great week. You too.